Hi everyone, I'm Solihin. In today's video, I will guide you through setting up the Raspberry Pi 5 step by step, making it easy for anyone to get started. All right, let's dive into this unboxing. First up, we have the official Raspberry Pi 5 case. Now you don't absolutely need a case to use the Pi 5, but it's a good idea to have one, especially to protect it from accidental drops or damage. Next, we've got the Raspberry Pi power supply. It's a 27 watt USB-C designed specifically for the Pi 5. You might be wondering, can I use my old Pi 4 power supply? Well, it might work since it uses 15 watts, but keep in mind, some devices will need that extra wattage. That's where the Pi 5 power supply really comes in handy. Moving on, we've got the active cooler from Raspberry Pi. This is a must have to prevent your Pi 5 from hitting thermal throttling. Basically, if the Pi gets too hot, it'll slow down, so proper cooling is super important. We'll see how to set this up later, but I'm not sure if both the cooler and the case will fit at the same time. Then we've got the official HDMI to micro HDMI cable, perfect for hooking up your display. And here's the MakerDisk micro SD card from Cytron, 32 gigabytes, solid performance, and plenty of space for your projects. And of course, the star of the show, our Raspberry Pi 5, with 8 gigabytes of RAM. It still maintains that small credit card sized form factor, but inside, it's packing a Broadcom BCM2712 64 bit ARM Cortex A76 processor, running at a speedy 2.4 gigahertz. Let's take a closer look at what the Raspberry Pi 5 has to offer, starting with the features. First up, the SD card port. Yup, it's still down here like before. On the left side, you'll see the gigabit ethernet port. This time, it's been moved from the far right, where it was on the Pi 4. In the middle, we've got two USB 3.0 ports. These are super fast, up to five gigabits per second. Basically, you can transfer data faster and handle multiple tasks at once. Next, on the far right, we have two USB 2.0 ports. They're not as fast as USB 3.0, but they're perfect for plugging in your keyboard and mouse. We also have a dedicated fan port, making it easier to keep the Pi cool during heavy use. For displays and cameras, you've got two MIPI DSi display ports and two CSI camera ports, great for adding extra screens or cameras. There are also two micro HDMI ports, which support 720p, 1080p, and even 4K resolutions. For power, there's a USB-C port as usual. Of course, the 40 GPIO pins are still here for all your DIY projects. Finally, on the board, you'll find a PCIe Express port. This is a really cool addition because it lets you connect a ribbon cable and use what's called a hat hardware attached on top with M.2 devices and more. This opens up a lot of possibilities for expansion and customization. And yes, despite all these features, the Pi 5 still keeps that small credit card sized form factor. Now let's go ahead and set it all up. All right, first up, let's install the active cooler onto the Pi 5. Just plug it into the dedicated fan port and make sure the thermal pad is nicely aligned with the processor. Next, let's try fitting the Pi into the case. It looks like the top part of the case won't fit with the active cooler attached, so you'll need to choose between using the Pi 5 top case or just sticking with the active cooler. For this setup, I'm going with the active cooler. And there you go. The Pi 5 is all set up with the active cooler and case. Before we move on to flashing the OS, just a quick note. If you're using Cytron's SD card like I am, it actually comes with the OS preloaded. That saves you a step, but if you're using your own card, you'll need to follow this process. Okay, let's start with flashing the OS. I'm using a micro SD card reader. Grab one from the link in the description if you don't have it yet. Next, open your browser and search for Raspberry Pi Imager, or just click the link below. Download the software that matches your operating system. I'm using Windows, so I'll download and install that version. Once installed, you'll see this interface. Start by selecting Raspberry Pi device to choose your Pi model. Then, click on Choose OS and select Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. Next, assign the storage device, which is your micro SD card. A quick tip, disconnect any other external storage devices to avoid accidentally selecting the wrong drive, as this will overwrite it with the new OS. You might be asked if you want to apply any OS customization settings. That's optional, so I'm just gonna continue. Once the OS is flashed, eject your SD card. Now we're ready to move on to setting up the hardware. Here's the hardware setup process.
I'm using a LAN cable, which is optional. You can connect it if you want a wired internet connection. Done. Let's boot up our Pi and get started. First up, let's check out the Raspberry Pi startup interface. Start by setting your country. Next, choose your Wi-Fi network. Since I'm using a LAN cable, I'll skip this step. Updating your software is a must, but I'll handle that later using the terminal. After the update, your Pi will restart. With everything set up, it's time to keep your Pi up to date. Click on the terminal icon in the upper left corner and type sudo apt update. Once that's done, use sudo apt full upgrade to get everything current. After the upgrade, you can type sudo reboot to restart your Pi or follow the standard shutdown procedure. By default, the display resolution might be set to 720p. To change it, click the Raspberry icon, go to Preferences, then Screen Configuration. In the Screen Layout Editor, select your display and choose your preferred resolution, 1080p or even 4K if you've got a UHD monitor. For recommended software, just head to the software installer. You can easily pick and apply the apps you want, and they'll install automatically. Let's check the browser now. It's smooth and perfect for browsing. Finally, let's run a quick stress test to ensure everything is running smoothly, especially the cooling system. Open the terminal again and type sudo apt-get install stress to install the stress tool. While the stress test is running, you can easily check the temperature right here on the taskbar. You can also open the top case to see the fan in action. A few quick tips. When shutting down your Pi, you've got options. Double press the power button for an easy shutdown, or press it once and click shutdown. Alternatively, click the raspberry icon, select logout, and then shutdown. If you need to force a shutdown, hold the power button for about 10 seconds, but use this as a last resort to avoid file corruption. And that's it. Your Raspberry Pi Fi is fully set up and ready for whatever project you have in mind. If you found this guide very helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more tech tips and tutorials.